141, if I wanted to go to the airlines yeah. and I wanted to just mm. like get there fast, Man, I'd be part 141 oh, all the way. Right, or a superstructure. When, when you get the license, so like your license that you got here, here in India, are you able to transfer that to an FAA license easily if you wanted to? I... What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to India's number one pilot podcast. So today we have Paul and Aaron. I'm myself actually shooting after what, uh, three months because uh, her and Chintan were doing uh, the whole we podcast. Okay, hey. your face has just changed as we as we start. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can still talk while you talk. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm used to recording things and like we can't I'm talk like, over each other. I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a podcast. Yes, yeah, so it's been a while, guys. It's awesome to see you here again. And uh, today we are gonna talk about differences in Indian and American aviation. So some of you might be willing to go to the US for your flight training, like I did myself, if we have jotted down certain, uh, certain questions about it, and we'll be asking those to Erin and Paul. So Erin's doing her instrument trading right now, and Paul uh, is doing commercial pilot's license right now in yeah. the US, in Arizona. Uh, yes, uh, welcome to Pilot Podcast. Thanks, and, uh, Thanks for having us. Oh, yes. I know, this is so fun. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Captain Neha once again, a meeting after a few days, or I would say a few weeks. And uh, yes, this is uh, the first podcast that uh, we are interacting and I'm meeting you after uh, some time after my delivery of a baby. And uh, oh, I was quite skeptical if I could fit into any of my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I managed to, <laughs> but uh, yes, so, so. Barely or you really barely, managed Barely, barely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, so it is great to see you. And yes, I was quite excited to come back to this uh, podcast and to come back to work again. Guys, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. taking out time to, to do this. And yes, uh, I you hope so you're liking it here in India. <laughs> Love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's so good yeah. being here, yes, and yes. it's an honor for us to be on here with you guys. So thanks yes. for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's the thing: yeah. we're all pilots, and and we are a community, right? So so it's awesome to catch up with each other, and that's that's great. Yeah. All right. We found you guys while we were like still in Arizona, and I was yeah. so impressed by all the content you put out, the course that you've built, like that you Thank both have you. built together. Thank it's it's Thank impressive, you. and what you're doing for aviation here in India and around the world. I mean, it's starting to reach around the world. I mean, it's it's you, sh- you guys you. should be yeah. proud of it. Like, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Thank you. So you are, you are doing your commercial right now. So, I am. so that's, yes. that's, that's, that's yeah. awesome. So. That's awesome. So, yep. Speaking of commercial, so as we know that in the US, right, we have part 141, uh, then we have part 61. So which path you are uh, doing it with right now? Yeah, uh, for me, all of my training has been part 61. Right. And uh, it's been a very casual road in my training. Right. Like right. I. I am a part of aviation for fun and for the fun flying that comes out of it and for the adventures yeah. we get to go on together and yeah. um, taking my friends on adventures and things like that. So um, it's been a casual path for me. And so part 61 has been great for that because right. um, I get to train when I want to yeah. and um, yeah. and get to further my training as I go and when I want to. Yeah. Um, part four, 141, if I wanted to go to the airlines, Mm. And I wanted to just mm. like get there fast, mm. man. I'd be a part one forty one oh, all the way, right. or a super structured part sixty one. Yeah. Okay. And, and there are really really structured part sixty ones that uh, we actually have friends that go to, and it is just like a one forty one, but just just labeled n- just labeled differently. Part 61. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. A lot of similarities. So okay. I think of part 141 as being almost like a college education yeah. with very rigid syllabuses or right. syllabi right. And, <laughs> and No, we call it syllabus. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. UK does syllabi. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so it's plural already. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I mean, part I, that's how I think of part 141 though. 
Mm. Yeah, that's that's really well put forward. Like it's it is like a college because I was a 141 student, oh, so nice. I've I've done the whole thing in in 141. The reason being actually like the schools that have part 141 usually have the um, service sessions approval. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, because there is an I twenty that is issued for an Indian to be invited to the U S. specifically for the purpose of flight training. Oh, interesting. Oh. And so it's the, easier to get a visa to come. No, without which you can't get a, get a flight training visa. Mm. So you've got to have. So now what some students do is they go there on part 141, then drop out of uh, part 141, and then switch to 61 because they want to. No way. Yeah, yeah. Now, both programs, you can get a DGCA Indian license. You can convert FA license uh, to Indian license very easily. It's, it's not difficult at all. The only point is you've got to meet the requirement of DGC as well. So if you have like 100 solo hours, 50 out of which has to be 100 nautical miles plus cross country. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. If you have that, you could. That's oh, that's okay. that's how it is. So in a part 141, there's yeah. lesser requirements to get your CPL. Yeah. Right? I think it's at 200 hours. Correct. It, Correct. Yeah. Correct. I haven't done it, it, so I think it's like one it, uh, two yeah, hours. It's, yes, it it depends on the school because it's a syllabus that's approved by FA for that specific school. So they have a certificate that says that this kind of part one forty one is approved for the school. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's it's not like. Um, it's not a cookie cutter that one thing fits all. Every different flight school has different part one forty one uh, structured. Oh, I did not yeah, know that. Yeah, yeah. Like Embraer Riddle would have a different flight school, 141, than, than L3RS, than uh, some other flight school. So is there a benefit for someone from here to go part 141 instead of part 61 well, beyond just like the lesser hour requirements? Or do they need the hours of part 61 in order to fulfill the requirement to convert here's the thing most of the students that go from india have one intention is to get a cpl and most of the students in as less of cost as yeah. possible because they're students right like yeah. and and loans in here are expensive like loans in india are at 10 to 12 percent per annum that's Whoa. yeah that's that's yeah. expensive <laughs> And uh, there are no student loans for flight training. Mm. So, yeah, it is expensive. So they want to spend least amount of money, least amount of time, because if time's more, then your cost of living is more. And if cost of living is more, then more years to pay the loan back. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's so true. So 140 when is usually structured such a way that it's done fastest. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like you are in and out within usually 10 to 12 months. Yeah. Like it depends. Like, I mean, when I went there was COVID. So I, it was like, I was there for quite some time. Man, that would have been a very different experience <laughs> in aviation than yeah. to now, I'm sure, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. But yeah, that is how it is. So that's why usually uh, Indian students that go to the U.S. Uh, prefer part 141. Got it. But first thing, when they actually get into a flight school, that flight school has to be 141 because otherwise they can't send I-20. Interesting. That's that's usual. That's why most international students have 141 program. Yeah. That's one of And that the totally makes sense. The yeah. cut down on the time, yeah. part 141, yeah. as I said, that's what I would yeah. do if I went yeah. to the airlines. Yeah. yeah. But there is a, there's a lot of cost savings in part 61 that... Sure that you can't have in part 141. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. That's why, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, that's about like, it is dependent on the flight school and the structure of the flight school and which one you would like to approach. So 
the perspective is different and for usually the schools that have one. like uh, 141 do have 61 as well correct mm. right correct, like correct. you can like l3 yes. has has a 61 program hmm. you can oh, you can get into 61 it's not maybe Emperor Riddle won't have it because yeah. Emperor Riddle, is, have you heard about Emperor Riddle? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have one, not, we have right? one in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, oh, is it? Yeah. 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 Okay. And then we had, at L3, we had like uh, many planes from North Dakota. Uh, oh, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So many, like... Um, Many U.S. flight schools have their airplanes, right? Like yeah. November yeah. Deltas. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So uh, after completing your CPL, like that, that's a question to you, then I'll ask you also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after, yes. So after completing your CPL, what's your plan in the U.S.? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, I think my answer is going to be a little bit less traditional than most. Yeah. Um, so... I'm going to take a roundabout way to answer this. So uh, a big driver in all of my education in aviation, instrument, CPL, and continuing, has been safety in the cockpit, number mm -hmm. one. For mm -hmm. And as Aaron and I adventure, we really just want safety to be paramount um, as it is. Absolutely. And so the way for us to do that is to get better training and continue to get more, more licenses education. and more yeah. education in that yeah. way. So CPL for us, number one, or for me, has been to further my education and to become even more competent in the aircraft. Right. So mm -hmm. after my CPL, uh, I think we're gonna be just traveling more together and focusing instead of on our training, on actually adventuring throughout the states. Right. Okay, so. okay. Paul's played with the idea of like getting his CFI, like one just to like, I don't know, grow your education in it more and have more of an understanding and stuff. But I don't think don't really, hold me to that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think you'd be doing like really any instructing with it. It would just be again, like, because why not? Why not keep growing in your education with it? So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, like they say, if you can teach something, you really have understood it. Yeah, that's yeah, very true. Yes. So yes. getting a CFI is not a bad idea. A bad idea. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. So generally, you can too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have a little bit more of a ways to go, though. <laughs> yeah, I feel like my driver to get a like a CFI would be to be able to like help friends get into aviation more yeah. or family or you know maybe if we have kids one day to yeah. be able to train my kids. I think sure. that'd be really rewarding. Sure. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. Well, and. Uh, also, it's like building your hours with CFI is way easier than just with commercial, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. any day. Yeah, there is a shorter validity to CFI for sure, but yeah, hey, you can always renew it, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> and and uh, not only CFI but CFII as well, so yeah. Just did you get your CFI in double? No, no, no. So no. you stopped at CPL. I, yeah, yeah. Okay. I could have, but I had a comeback, and and my program was only until CPL, like commercial multi. Yeah. So I have commercial multi. That's I do not have a commercial single. Okay. I have a commercial multi. Wow. All <laughs> so right. you're doing commercial single and then you'll do a multi add on. You're planning on multi add on. I am. Or? I am planning on it. Okay. Yeah. It cool. just sounds. Fun to yeah, add that as well. <laughs> well, like it depends which plane you want to buy later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. Yep, yep, yep. That's, yeah. that's what it is. So, any questions that you have about Indian aviation, that's Captain Neha yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we were talking about, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, well, like, how fast does your program like go through? Because I know we have our differences between like 61, 141. Right. right. How fast so is that? Uh, here there is no part but 141 or part 61. It is one structured program where you complete your training all throughout till you get your CPL. Mm -hmm. So initially you complete hours uh, till you are ready to go for solo flight. And thereafter, after solo flight, there is no concept that you need to get PPL and thereafter instrument you can, your training is there, but there is no requirement to get PPL hmm. if you want to go for CPL. Oh, really? So uh, you can complete your uh, like solo hours and you can keep uh, doing time building with your student pilot license itself. Wow. There is no requirement of uh, private pilot license in India. Wow. And with SPL, yeah, you, you can don't. continue. 
to build your hours and uh, thereafter instrument flying is trained by an instructor but you get instrument rating along with your commercial pilot license no way yeah, yeah. so that is uh, that's so, so how it goes so it goes student pilot and then, then CPL you instrument. get CPL and instrument, yes. So is no. that why you do so much ground yeah. knowledge prior? Because it's all like you're doing basically everything at once? Yeah, everything yeah. at once. Wow. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you do all That's these so ground stuff. <laughs> yeah, I yes, love yes, that. Yes, yes. There is no <laughs> private check ride. There is no instrument check no ride instrument until check. you're ready okay, for Okay, but your written show. exams yeah. are way more intense than FAA yes. from what I hear, correct? Yes, yes, yes. And y'all don't have Shepard Air <laughs> to help you out either, do you? <laughs> 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 no, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I got... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, they are intense. So, like, if you have in private pilot lessons, you have one ground exam, correct? Mm-hmm. And yeah. then instrument another ground exam, and thereafter you have for commercial. But here, uh, for every subject, there is a separate exam, like for air navigation, thereafter then meteorology, air regulation, then technical general, technical specific. So you have uh, five subjects wow. and then uh, radio telephony, that's RTR. Communication with the ETC, there is a separate exam for that. No way. So, <laughs> yeah. So there are these uh, Man, exams. hearing some of my uh, <laughs> radio calls early in training, I should have taken that exam yeah, first, no honestly. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, well, there it's more casual and here uh, the exam point of view yes it is uh, more structured and even uh, actual radio telephone is structured but no, uh, so it's sometimes not, it's not uh, chaotic in the u.s it's not it's cha- the- i'm not saying it's chaotic <laughs> no, no. i'm not saying it is yeah, chaotic yeah, no yeah, no no yeah. i did not use the word i don't know chaotic. you haven't heard the yes, practice yes, area that yeah. we practice <laughs> Yeah, it's practicing. slightly <laughs> casual compared to uh, the structure yeah, I mean, we certain use here. things, but hmm. fundamentally it is pretty much the same. I'd say like there is mm-hmm. not much of, much a, difference of a difference as such, yeah. mm-hmm. like in actual mm-hmm. RT mm-hmm. communication, mm-hmm. like it's, it's pretty much the right, same. Right, like, right. Unless so. you go to China, that will be different. Like, oh, interesting. Have, mm-hmm. yeah. have you flown over to China? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you okay. have to do more training for that or something? Uh, so their RT is in Chinese, and no uh, way. yes, there is a translator there. Wow! So really? yes, yes, yes. A translator their in main their main RT uh, primary language of communication is Chinese, and only for uh, certain airlines who do not understand uh, Chinese, for them there is a uh, English communication. Yes. Oh, interesting. Uh, so we don't understand what's happening in the background with other airplanes. So it's kind Whoa. of a... Whoa, yes. that'd be a big difference. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a huge so difference. So there's a translator yes. specifically a for your airplane. Yeah. Wow. For airplanes who don't understand, like air pilots who don't understand Chinese. Yeah. Is that more uncomfortable? Of or? course, of <laughs> course. <laughs> it is. So do you need... To do certain different road checks to go to Hong Kong no. and, and those places. No, no, no. Okay. There, okay. Uh, RVSM is also height is in meters. Oh my it's gosh. expressed in meters, not in feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Is it yeah. feet here? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Wait, really? Height is yeah. in feet here. Yeah. No way. Hey, everything's the same except no. for uh, your Visi- altimeter. Visibility is yeah. in. Uh, yeah. Meters and kilometers. Oh, meters. Okay. meters. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but uh, there it's in Institute Miles in US, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, an altimeter here is in hectopascal. There it's in inches of yeah. mercury in US. Wow. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. So it's not two nine or decimal, two nine point something. It is like one zero one three point yeah. something. Or, oh, yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yep. fascinating. I mean, yeah. 320 has like, you just press it and it, it'll switch to uh, Mercury and then if you press In it. In Airbus 320 <coughs> airplane, you can switch these units. Oh, you can. Yeah. So yeah. whatever you learned on, you can make yeah. it. No, actually, you. because because the <coughs> ATC no, tells you uh, millibars, hectopascals. Ah, okay, okay. So you just so, leave it so you've, Yeah, you don't, you don't <laughs> change it unless you're going to the U.S. <laughs> Like, okay, this is a sidetrack, but you were talking about the um, the translator and not being able to understand everyone else in ATC over China. Um, do they have ADS? They don't have ADSB in they a lot of. They don't have ADSB. They do. Yeah, yeah. They don't oh, have okay, ADSB. okay. Do you have ADSB in India in, as well? In India, also we do have ADSB, but 
in the airplane we are now in the commercial so airplane so adsb so out is there on all airplanes yeah, yeah. ADSB okay out adsb is in is not there Interesting. Not Why do you need in on a on a, you know, on a like big yeah, I mean, yeah, your yeah. IFR <laughs> yeah. they're watching out for you. It doesn't matter yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You have like TCAS oh, and everything, which is way oh, more sophisticated. Okay, okay. So yeah, on a Cessna, yeah, I used yeah, to always these carry are the things like that we don't experience <laughs> at all. Yeah. I know, literally. <laughs> like always travel my century TCAS, yeah <laughs> yeah we don't yes. have it we just trigger it in other planes yeah. <laughs> yeah. a half a century well I've never used it since I came back to oh, India really? yeah would it yeah. work here it would why not yeah it would work but not ADSB weather ah uh, okay okay because ADSB weather needs to be broadcasted on ADSB channels hmm. which is not in the in in India so in the US it is but yeah yeah, yeah traffic Yeah, traffic would be that. That's interesting. Yeah. In airplane, we do have airborne weather radar, so that scans weather ahead of you. So that is, oh, that you know, mm. suffices the purpose. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and that's more real time, actually, because yeah. yeah, like airline pilots do need real, real time, time weather, right? Sure, like yes. we have how much three minutes delay on Century, or fifteen. Uh, Up no, to 15. no, it's not 15. I think I think it's that's lesser. That's all. That's what they've always told me. But okay, m- even I don't know. You maybe could... I'm just maybe I'm really conservative. <laughs> and I'm like 15 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like 30 seconds now. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, way don't know. off. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm not sure either uh, so because I had. Yeah, just... it's real time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, really yeah. nice. Yeah. Wow. So TCAS, airborne weather radar. Then uh, we have. There is no primary radar though that is there with the ground, but that's not required anyway. So only airplanes which do not have any transponder with them, they will not be visible on our airplane. Mm. But um, the ones which have transponder, yes, they will be visible. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. if a flight student, flight school student, is flying a Cessna and on in the they middle don't of. They have transponders. Some of them. Some of oh, them. Oh really? Some of them. Yeah. Some of them do have transponders. Some of the newer ones, like the G1000. Pla- uh, nice yeah, Mode transponders. Mode transponders. Just, the, yeah, Mode just transponders the airplane. Yeah, that's, that's in all of those, I think so. Most of those. Is that regulated really. here or? Like so small airplanes, there is no requirement to have those transponders anyway. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. So like Mode C transponders <laughs> are not required here or? For smaller airplanes, like... Um, For like smaller ones, yeah. yeah. Like, like airline operators airlines, is mandatory. Yes. For yeah. sure, yeah. 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 But I mean, if I wanted to fly, <laughs> let's say, a uh, Piper Warrior into yeah. Mumbai International. Yeah. It depends on air uh, airport requirement. It okay. depends on a certain airway requirement. It depends what altitude you're flying. So it depends yeah. on those things as well. Right. Like if you are flying into Mumbai, they would want you to have more Charlie transponder. For sure. Right. You cannot fly without any yeah, transponder yeah. Yeah. They into Mumbai. See, yeah. 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 Yes, yes. So there are requirements of certain, uh, you know, airways, airports or altitude. Like if you want to fly in RBSM, obviously you would want to, you have to have more Charlie transponder. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I think we're just so used to flying around mm. like the Bravo that we have to have it. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, even uh, Sanford was Charlie. So, so yeah, and, and Orlando is Bravo. So it's like Sanford's in a shelf of Bravo underneath the shelf of Bravo. So there's Charlie oh, wow. and above that, 1600 above, it's Bravo. That, that'd be really fun yeah. airspace to learn out of. <laughs> well, like instrument is pretty easy, to yeah. be honest. Like, uh, But if you're going VFR, yeah, you've yeah. got to be really careful oh, yeah. out there. Yeah. And then, yeah, down south, if you go to Miami and all those places, it's like, which was it? I think it was uh, Boca Raton. And it was uh, IMC. And <laughs> on the approach, like uh, long finals, uh, it was what? I think RNAV, RNAV uh, 27 or no, RNAV 09. Something like that. The it fact was. that you remember exactly what RNAV approach you were no, on, that's impressive. No, because it was memorable. What yeah. I'm going to oh, okay. <laughs> so The reason the, I remember it. It was IMC, like uh, layers of clouds, and I break through one cloud, and then there is like 
my ADS-B is telling me there is like really one airplane close unidentified or something. Oh it is really close. Okay. Uh, no, not ADS-B. It wasn't, no, it was not ADS-B. The, the guy on RT, the ATC is telling oh, me like this. Yeah, yeah, traffic. Okay, he, he is telling me, okay? Because he didn't probably have, back then, ADS-B out was not mandatory. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. yeah now it is. Now I think yeah, it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so this was 2019. And and there was a buffer time before before everybody could install ADS-B out. Yeah. And it was like traffic half a mile. Okay. Oh <laughs> I don't know what, what, which, what, what unidentified traffic are. Now this guy, I'm on this approach. This guy has come like this, comes like this. <gasps> Excuse he was, me. He was aerobatic. <gasps> and he oh goes, my he, he goes like, like literally he, he pierces through the cloud oh, like yeah. this. He has VFR. Freaking cowboy in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of cowboy. And, and I was like, what the f is this? Yeah. Like, yeah. So down south of Miami, that's that's like crazy student traffic, student on and all these VFR traffic is crazy out there. Like really crazy out there. That's a whole nother level of crazy though. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. It this is. guy just yeah. waving at you as you're on the approach. <laughs> <laughs> like literally it was like half a mile. And he comes like this. Wow. And then he goes like a dolphin back again. Like, oh I cannot forget that. Like, I can never <laughs> forget that. Like, I, Somebody put him up to that. You just know it. He, he, they were like, go mess with this guy. <laughs> What you so, what you do? You just tell them that not maintaining VFR, and then that's it. Yeah, and there's there's not much that you could do about it. Yeah, that's so true. That's horrifying. That is yeah, experience. I know. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Where, uh, so, yeah. where you learned here in India? How was the airspace there? Was it very busy? Is it? So here, the uh, flight training is there generally in remote areas where there is the less traffic. For commercial traffic, I would say, oh, that'd be so, so that nice. uh, so that the flight training can happen smoothly and at a decent pace. Yeah. But uh, if you have the flight training institute located at such airport where there are commercial operations, then uh, there are times when you know the flights can get delayed because there is fast. Whenever there is a you know in India. Since uh, the U.S. is quite developed because the entire uh, flying started from there. But in India, the controllers are a little hesitant mm. to control both these airplanes at the same time Fair. with the slow moving airplane as well as these big jets. Yeah. yeah. So they just don't One person's don't final is like 50 huh. miles an hour and the other <laughs> one's 150. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so they keep a lot of separation. Fair. And uh, then they don't give such startup clearance and then they delay the departures for the smaller airplanes so that they can facilitate the, uh, you know, departure and arrival of the commercial airplanes. Because commercial airplanes, they can't keep on hold because their fuel is burning at a much faster rate yeah. and airlines would question them that, you know, come on, like, what are you up to? So yeah. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, speaking but, of which, you do need a startup <coughs> clearance in India. Oh really? So to start uh, airplane, yeah, you do need a clearance. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If it is a controlled. Okay, okay. If it is controlled, if it is not, it doesn't matter. Well, I was curious because we sat in on a ground school today. Um, I was curious, like, how? I don't know how to word it. We've talked about it in the car. Can you help me out real quick? Yeah, I'm trying to think of what you were talking about. <laughs> oh gosh, Sorry, my we need more Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll, sure. I'll, I'll get you some. No, no. <laughs> Dude, this girl be like a <laughs> Yeah. No, we have like boxes of Red Bull. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Sponsored by Red Bull. Yeah, no, right? Well, yeah. I was just, we were noticing like in oh, the classroom, yeah, yeah. like how attentive like all the students were yeah. in like the ground school that we observed today. Yeah. And I was curious, like, it maybe it's because we're we're part of like a part sixty one school, but is it that same exact way like in uh, like one forty one when you are in the U S. where everyone's like super like attentive like they're trying to I don't know like you just you can tell, feel the energy of yeah. like trying to show the professor like I've learned yeah. this like yeah. I'm growing in this way is yeah. it the same way or is that like a cultural thing or is that just like 
Well, everyone that's part 141 or like anyone that's like going airlines? No, the the point is there's a strong competition amongst aspiring pilots in to to get into an airline, right? Yeah. yeah. So they've got to be good from the get-go, mm-hmm. be it theory, be it flying, be it any sense. And because of that, they want to prove themselves. It's it's yeah. it's that, that competitive nature comes from there. Because if they do not perform, then getting into airlines is not that easy. Like, it is really not easy mm-hmm. like unless your knowledge is perfect and and you know your stuff and you know your things you yes. know your procedures you know your knowledge about all these subjects how things work and then yeah you do get into it <coughs> so yes. that's that's why that is like that and then the difficulty on uh, dgca exams it's not difficult if you join CNTA, but <laughs> 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 but but yeah, like difficulty on DGCA exams if we compare it with the FAA knowledge test. Okay, here's the thing: the check ride in India is not as difficult as the FAA check ride, hmm. hmm. but the knowledge test is more difficult than the FAA knowledge test. Hmm. So it all bounces out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, you've given check rides. You know, like, you do something wrong, that's like, come next time. Yeah, exactly. It's like, (laughs) one thing wrong, like, one wrong radio call or one wrong something, and, and that is like, see you later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that is how it is. Uh, yeah. Now you are gonna give instrument check right. I so know. Sorry. I know. <laughs> Thanks for spiking my anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll you'll be doing all those DME arcs and, and all of those oh, yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> NDB approaches. Oh, yeah, that that is. <laughs> that is out yeah. yeah. Do you guys have any here? No. no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. This mango milkshake. Thanks so much. Oh, that's for two of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Or ek bana? Okay, Leon. Or ek. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Red Bull and a milkshake. That's, that's great. Yeah, that's one of all the stops. <laughs> that's a bad Excuse combination, me. I think. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yeah, cheers with the water bottle. Yeah, your water bottle. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> Whoa, that's good. Yeah, you, you like it? Mm. If you wanna try like mango, mango, no, yeah, you can like, like he'll, he'll cut a few for you. Do you want? I it? love mango. Yeah, you like it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll ask him to uh, Thank you. cut a ball of mango. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> After the spoiled. podcast. Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't we won't hold you uh, for too long. Yeah. Really, thanks for doing this. I it's know. Cool. No, no, that's okay. He's sleeping now. I just. Oh, good. Yeah. But, yeah. Do you have, like, a camera on him where you can, like, watch him all the time? I think I'm going to gift her that. You should. Absolutely. <laughs> no, but it is said even the U.S., uh, you know, a child safety department has said that a baby should not be kept in another room. Mm. It is, uh, that is one of the reason of many sudden infant death syndrome, yeah. SIDs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in U.S., and uh, that should be avoided by parents in a For sure. any cost. Yeah. A baby should not be on the same bed as parents, but should be in the same room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so uh, it is not very safe because, you know, uh, you don't know like what is happening because here, a smallest of the sound, we just wake up and then we see what is exactly happening. Yeah. But in that night sleep, you would not even think of getting up and then checking on yeah, for sure. in the other room or no, no, what is happening. No, no, it's not about but other uh, room. No, no, yeah, you go camera. to him. It's okay. No, we are, it's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, like many people think yeah. that why a baby should be in parents' room. Yeah. Like, you yeah. Know? yeah. But um, I heard it from yeah. Jordan Peterson, some podcast, uh, yeah. and he was like, uh, a newborn, a week of lack of touch to a newborn, a newborn could die because just lack of touch. Like wow. if, if nobody Dude, There's touched. so many studies out there. Yeah, that, it's it's that a scientific study. Like, they feel 
good when someone yeah. holds yeah. you or mm-hmm. even if you just pat on him. Yeah. So that's uh, one of the reasons. Now you'll be a good mother. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> 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 I've been following one, uh, you know. You spoke about one. SIDS. Have you seen the um, the device you can put on his foot and like monitor his <coughs> oxygen levels and his like really? breathing and stuff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of our friends have it. Like my sister did it. She's a nurse too, though. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, so he is in a uh, registered nurse. So oh, yeah, is yeah, it? yeah. Oh, so okay. I'm an ICU nurse. Oh, okay, I haven't okay, practiced okay. in two years. I did it for seven oh, and okay. did travel nursing for a long oh. time. You did it for seven years. Yeah, I did it oh, for seven okay. years. That's awesome. Yeah, because I'm old, like you. Remember? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We went. <laughs> oh off. my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. No. Yeah. No. I yeah. was curious. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to aviation. Yeah, here. that's that's what yeah, I was yeah. gonna okay. say. Let's get back. Pull to it back it. in. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about um, the that you get your student pilot's license and then you get your CPL yes. instrument at the same time. Yes, yes. How many hours of flight time are you doing in there? What's the cost associated with uh, that? What does that look like? Yeah, it's around 200 hours of flight training. Oh, so very similar. Yes, yes, it is pretty similar. And uh, 200 hours of flight, you can either include multi in it or you can, you know, uh, af- do it afterwards after CPL. Hmm. So uh, regarding the cost, a uh, cost involved is it depends on flight school to flight school. But uh, in a good flight school, if you talk about in India, so that's around 55 to 60 lakhs, which is approximately about... Uh, in dollars, I would yeah, have to calculate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, I'd have to yeah. calculate. So yeah. how much it would be around in dollars? Around sixty thousand dollars. Okay. Sixty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Okay, somewhere around that. Sixty. Yeah, sixty thousand dollars is is yeah. fifty. That's that's yeah. the mm. cost in a good flight school, but uh, you know, average one, it can be even lesser. Also, like around maybe. 35 to 40. Like the flight school that you visited today, yeah, it would be probably uh, 50,000. 45 uh, to 50,000. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. You so, can name it if you want to. <laughs> 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 so is it is it more worthwhile or is it more cost effective to stay in India and train if you're from India or? Uh, so uh, if we want a better quality of flight training, as he said that Nila said that the quality of flight training and the check rides are more effective and efficient in US. Hmm. So if anyone is uh, ready to spend and able to spend that much amount financially, if they are capable, then they go to US complete their flight training and come back and then get the Indian license if they have the UC papers cleared. If in case not, then if they want to save some amount and they cannot afford the um, you know flight school fees in US, then they go for uh, training in India. Hmm. So that is one of the So ways. like that's just the, the just flight the training flight cost is not mm-hmm. that different yeah. as such. Okay. Like, how much would you think you would end up spending by the time you get your commercial multi? Well, I feel like it depends on the school. Yeah, just yeah. I feel like our so, friends with like 141, they're at like a little over 100,000. Yeah, they're around 100,000 US. Um, and then I'd say for probably like 100,000, like, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, CFI, it really depends on CFI. school. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's, CFI, that's CFI, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'd say probably, like, around 60. You're probably right. It's around 60 to, to 70. Yeah. Um, and it depends on the school, the the equipment you're flying, right? If yeah. you're in a brand new Cessna yeah. with yeah. a G1000. Yeah, yeah like, that that like L3. L3 yeah. was around 100,000, like, approximately okay. 100,000. But the, if you're flying steam gauges yeah. like us in our beater little <laughs> yeah. piper, you know, that can be very cost effective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the contrary, so, like... Hmm. Um, is what 65 70 thousand 65 thousand something like that oh interesting yeah yeah that that is and that is their 141 hmm. so essentially the cost is not that different for flight training but cost is different in cost of living as you are in oh, india yeah. right now do you not think like things are really cheap in here like yeah. most things yeah. like yeah. most things maybe if you if you go like to a high end restaurant or something then that's a different story but apart from that like uber yes. or, yeah. or like a 100 dollar uber in the US was 
six dollars here. Yeah, exactly. Massive difference. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So that is the difference. The so cost of living in here is lesser. That's why they end up spending. Students end up spending lesser. Got it. Yeah. That so makes sense. yeah. So when when you get the license, so like your license that you got here here in India, are you able to transfer that to an FAA license easily if you wanted to? I want to do that. Oh, you ATPL. do. I want to do that to ATPL or uh, FAA ATPL. Okay. But for that, I will have to uh, go to US and stay there for a few months. So no, so she's gonna come and hang out with us. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> so then give some check rides yeah. on the Airbus three twenty as I have. PIC endorsement on Airbus 320. Oh, nice. And uh, that I need to do it. Or else, uh, if I want to do it, then even on P68, uh, multi any multi-engine which is endorsed on my license, I can just give check ride on that and then that is done. But hmm. since I want to keep my th Airbus 320 instrument current, I would be doing a simulator check on that same. So how does it benefit you like to get an FAA license? Uh, so uh, I... First of all, medical is the very important thing. In India, medical is extremely, extremely stringent. Really? Hmm. So uh, medical and the exams, these two things are quite stringent. So FA medical is, I think, you just go to the doctor and yeah. then it's, a, you know, you can do the reading is uh, done well, your audiometry is fine, and then you're done, right? Yeah. You're, yeah. But uh, apart from that in India, Medical is extremely stringent wherein you have entire uh, blood check, then urine check, chest x-ray, ECG, then uh, you have um, even sonography, abdomen, and really? you have physical checkup. Mm. And uh, yes. So is that annually, like every year? Yes, annual. Wow. And then uh, over time, you have stress tests, like you have to run on a treadmill and PTA. There are many, many uh, tests. As I'd be like, nah, I don't want to run as you go out. Yeah. FAA all the way. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you want to keep yourself fit and you want to pass uh, those tests yeah. and clear those tests. But you never know future what happens. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, so it is good to have one license of another country and another state, preferably FAA, yeah. which is a very strong license. So, so with the... The what? company you're on right now and the A the A320 that you're flying, when you transfer your license to FAA, will that still be valid here yeah. in India and you'll be able to stay with the company? And yeah, 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 of course. I will be able to stay with the company. I will continue to stay with the company. So the only oh, thing is, yeah. yes, yes. Like As converting well. license doesn't change anything. That doesn't That's change. Really? Okay. okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Because it's called conversion, but it's like addition. You don't actually let go of your previous license to, okay. yeah, like I do have American license, which is valid. I do have Indian license, which is valid too. Got it. I do have Canadian license, which is valid too. So, yeah. Casual licenses, <laughs> <know>. this guy. <laughs> the flags, no, I no. see it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. really, that's really interesting. So with your FAA license, you'll basically keep that current yeah. and then you're what are the what's the acronym DC DGCA DGCA Directorate General of Civil Aviation yeah ah okay, yeah. okay so your DGCA license you just won't maintain that medical anymore so it'll still be present but it's just not active your active license will be FAA uh yeah so okay. uh, as long as the medical is valid then DGCA license will be valid if so at in all, India if she'll be flying under DGCA license mm. yeah okay the like, way you will be flying as FAA FA license. license. Like, even if you choose to convert your license to, say, DGCA license, okay. you'll just have an additional license with you. Got that's it. That's all. Okay, but if you are flying for an American carrier, your American license is what will be for sure. applicable yes. for that job. So for India, though I have an American license, my Indian license is applicable for this. That so makes sense. The carrier's home country license is something that you need to fly in that, that country. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So while you're based here, you will have to maintain that medical. Yes, yeah. of course. That of course. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yes. Like, 
So there are provisions to fly in India on foreign license. It is possible. There is a permit called FATA, F-A-T-A. Yes. Hmm. So that is like a permit to fly on a foreign license for a limited time. But if your contract becomes permanent, then then you need to have Indian. You have to yeah, do the conversion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it is a temporary permit. That's, yeah. that's how it is. Because yeah. that is based on requirement basis. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. moment when airlines are short on pilots from India, they would hire pilots from other states. So that is the time when those pilots would be, we, would, we had many uh, foreign pilots before COVID. Do you see people coming to India to train from other countries? And if so, what countries and, you know, what attracts them here? Uh, is the pay skill, salary? Yes. No, training. They He is asking about training. training. So in the training side oh, of things. Training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 not the training. For training, no, no, people don't come to India from other states. At least right now. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not as okay. well now, no. Because of the uh, stringent requirement of medical, stringent requirement of DGCA ground class, hmm. and uh, DGCA exams, I would say. Uh, so <laughs> You're like, if you can do anything else, do it. <laughs> <laughs> because of the stringent requirement of the medical, stringent requirements of the DGCA ground subjects yeah. and RTR. And the These lack the of Chipotle, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that, too. <laughs> that too. That <laughs> too. Another yeah. point is training infrastructure capacity in India is not that big yet. Like, yet, yeah. U.S. has massive training infrastructure. Like, there are schools in almost every state at least southern part of the U.S., every state has schools. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, like, schools in northern part. Like, I have no idea. Are there? Uh, there's schools yeah. in every state. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and Washington's. Actually, yeah. uh, this, is a, this is an interesting thing that I found out. Some airports are, fe- or there's a lot of federally funded airports in the, yeah. in the U.S., and there are some that have a requirement that if they're receiving funding from the the U.S. government. I believe this is how it works. Okay, okay. I could be okay. slightly off here, uh-huh. but um, the airport actually requires the FBO to have a flight school oh. if there is no flight school on that airport. So right. we personally know of some friends that actually have an FBO and mm-hmm. a flight school closed down. And their FBO was required then to open a flight school on that airport within a certain amount of time. Um, yeah, from yeah, and it was just it was a requirement. So right. so yeah, we have flight schools everywhere, everywhere, everywhere right. in the everywhere. US, right. and That's a sick. flight school could be a Part sixty one operation where one guy owns one plane yeah. and he yeah. is the instructor out of that plane. Yeah. And that's yeah. A, that's yeah. a school. Yeah, it's really uh, yes to open a flight school in India is little bit more complicated there is there are more like approvals and many things from the government that are required to open a flight school on the contrary a 61 flight school in the u.s is relatively easier to start with right Mm, yeah yeah like you get to your CP, CFI, CPL, and then CFI, you can buy a plane and yeah. and and you're After the races. and you're gonna yeah. do that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked since. Okay. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's what it is. I heard today, and like, correct me if I'm wrong, or if like. I'm butchering a little bit that you guys only have one DPE here in India or is it no. in this like region of Mumbai or no 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 didn't you hear that no. today no no there was only um no one multi instructor or oh. one multi for like Seneca's or something like that yeah so oh. it was it, you're right but it was for specifically the Seneca oh. or something okay. that I could check right. people out in or instruct people in some right. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, never mind. That just answered my question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that brings up a good point, though. I think, you know, we do have a lot of resources in the States for a lot of different aircraft. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, like a Seneca, if you can't find that training, well, then where are you going to go? Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to then find that training somewhere <laughs> else. I think that's, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a good nugget right. to take away. In India, it's like, CFY is not a certified flight instructor, but is a chief flight instructor. Oh, interesting. Mm. 
So he is allowed to take check ride. Mm. Now, which aircraft that he is approved to take check ride on? So for Seneca, there are not many Senecas in India. Yeah. There are more of um, Technam Samalti. Okay. Uh, so Technam is uh, kind of popular in India. Then you have... Uh, like DA-42s maybe? DA-42s yeah. are there. Yeah. Yeah, DA-40s are there okay. single engine. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. DA-40s, DA-40s. And DA Cessna 152s. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. But Seneca, I'd say whole India would have not more than five Senecas. Now, mm. in U.S., it's like class category type. Yeah. Right? Now, here, if you want to if you have done your flying on a Seneca in the U.S., you want to do another multi in in India, you've got to give tech-specific paper for that. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah. So you have to, like, show flight time and show that you've been checked out. of that particular airplane. Yeah. Like, for example, you have a car manual. Let's say you buy one of the fancy car. Yeah. You have a manual. You need to read it. So the same way for the airplane, there is a specific exam. You need to know the numbers, rotation speed, Whoa, oil so quantity. So it's like a type quantity. rating for a system yeah, 150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, wow. yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Like it's like <clears throat> in US, it's it's up to your discretion, right? Like yeah. if you've uh, given your check ride on a C172, you're really legal to fly a Piper next day. It yeah. doesn't yeah. matter. But would you? Like, no, yeah. probably not. Honestly, like, this seems, like, safer to do this. Like, hey, make sure you know your numbers before yeah, you go yeah. fly yeah. another plane. Yeah. I think so that's, that's the very way safe. In India. Yeah, that's so, so you need that aircraft on your license. Wow, that's yeah, great. Yeah. So, see, any wise pilot would not do it. Yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah, they just want to be sure. Yeah. That. <laughs> but you have those cowboys that come through the clouds <laughs> that would definitely be doing it. So. Like, like, if I haven't flown a Piper, I'm not putting my family into it, and, and yeah, I'm, no. not, I'm not flying it until I know. See, it would probably take two to three flights, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not more than that. Yeah, I had to do yeah. that conversion a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're right. There's, so there's when you're a CFI, you, you do need the stands on it. Mm. on that airplane like uh, in a 141 program if you are gonna teach a Cessna you will be standardized on a Cessna I don't know about 61 <laughs> 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 uh, so okay we are, we are going way too deep in <laughs> well no I just thought it was cool that like we went and observed the ground school today and mm -hmm. then just like walking in the classroom it was well, it was originally three guys and then two girls and then another girl walked in. And it was like that, you don't see that in the States 50-50 split, mm -hmm. like not even close. And so, I don't know, it was just like, I, yeah, yeah. To even have a female <laughs> instructor in the States is like from a female like student pilot is yeah. like incredible. Yeah, um, right, right. And so I just thought it was so cool. And then like getting to hear about like the history of female pilots in India mm -hmm. and like how you guys gone back like from the very beginning was incredible. And I don't know much about it at all, um, but just getting to hear even like, right. I don't know, a couple yeah. years. Yes, now many female pilots are uh, there in India and many females are stepping into this uh, profession because of the many factors which they are comfortable with. Like parents are now more open to sending women to this profession. So mm. That's cool. Yes. Do you guys have organizations that like, are pushing like women to get into aviation or are they just naturally stepping no, into it? No, they are naturally stepping into wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. That's cool. Well, I mean, airlines are promoting it. <coughs> yeah. Right? So, so because airlines are promoting uh, women empowerment, yeah, sure. I mean, that is also one of the reasons. Uh, like I can't name it, but yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. guys like have scholarship? I guess this is for anything. Like, do you have scholarship opportunities for students? No, 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 no. There's no discrimination in scholarship uh, in women and men. Uh, Actually, for no flight training, there are not many scholarships. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Are there in the U.S.? Yeah. There are. Absolutely. Yeah. Scholarships, yeah. grants. Yeah. yeah. 
and not just for like women, for like yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here also, it's not yeah. for women. For Some organizations, train. very few of them, they do offer scholarships, but um, that's pretty, pretty difficult to get. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. So, any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> You're hungry. <laughs> and I'm super hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll uh, probably <clears throat> end this here, cut this here. Any, any other thing that you want to discuss? No, thank you for yeah. talking about uh, your experience in aviation. Thank here. you like, so much for joining us on today's podcast. And it was. You great, can talk great. him into getting into an airline. I've been trying to. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. Give it time. We'll see. You and everyone else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get your CFI. So the real plot twist will be airing at the airlines. Oh God. <laughs> well. Why not? I know. Why not, right? Why not? Yeah, even just seven years. You could do seven years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give myself a limit too, right? <laughs> well, get, get CFI, then, then I know that, that you're yeah. going on that path. <laughs> For sure. No, that's so true. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's been something we've looked forward to for a long time is learning more about aviation around the world. So thank you for having us on here and talking about that a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Thank I think you. it's awesome to find other people with a similar passion and um, yes, yeah, yeah, a common hobby and passion Absolutely. in life. So this has been great. Thanks. It's our Absolutely. pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. It was great to have you on board. Thanks. CNTAA yeah. at Pilot Podcast. <laughs> thank you so much actually Thank we you. could have gone to training center if you had more time but your trip to India is like really short it's like two I seconds know, it's yeah. Too yeah. Short. Yeah. yeah it's way yeah. too way short, short. Yeah. how many days more uh, we're going to Delhi next yeah. uh, okay. we leave tomorrow <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Very what yeah, time you have to train or flight when? we decided to do uh, the flight to do the flight yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be eight, like yeah, it'll save you some time because you don't Definitely. have that much time. Exactly. Actually, yeah, yeah. Exactly. we would love to come back though one day and yeah, see absolutely. your training center, especially <laughs> yeah, as you guys grow. I mean, it sounds yeah. like you have big plans for growth. So, yep, yes, those yes, are absolutely. the cities right there: Mumbai, mm-hmm. Delhi, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Ahmedabad. Wow, there wow. are definitely some names on there I want to go visit. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that'll be. That'll be it. We'll just go to six cities. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That'll be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. That Thank is really you. exciting what you guys are doing with that, too. Yeah. That's yeah. Sweet. Thank you for joining us, guys. And thank you for joining. Okay. We'll see you in the next episode. If you are an aspiring pilot done with your 12th, uh, consider signing up for CNTAA online. And if you are looking for looking to join an offline uh, class, then CNTA does have a training center in Mumbai. Okay. Where Captain Neha and Captain Pankaj look after your training. You're trained in the best way possible that there is for the DGCA exams. Thank you. It was awesome having you on this podcast. Thank you.